Okay, today's lecture is cricket representations mediating between the digital and the analog. I think from my last lecture, which is a lecture I delivered be before the guidance week, uh, I have mentioned that the CAD drawings, AutoCAD, and the digital production of hyper-render images has come to dominate the architectural practice. And in this lecture, I will cover you know, the creative 2D drawings in several aspects. And more importantly, they are not only analog and not only digital drawings. They are combining multiple methods and multiple media for the most creative and effective representation for your projects. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so I would like to start this lecture by this short paragraph written by Pierre de Maron. Uh, he is actually the founder of Herzog and the Maru, uh, which is one of the most famous architecture firms in the world. He once mentioned uh, the computer is an important tool no one could do without it. Uh, but for me, it's a tool and it doesn't replace thinking. It can make you disconnected and authentic, but that is why we always say, bring it out of the computer, print it up, use paper, use physicality and models to understand and anticipate what is the thing will be in the end. Something physical, something real, something for the people. So I, I want to bring it up at the beginning of the lecture is because we are, although you know, the lecture theory is entering into this digital media, digital worlds, it will never replace you know, the traditional tools Hand, like hand drawings or sketches on your sketchbook. So just bear in mind, it's not only a digital thing, it's something, you know, thrown into the next phase of your work. Um, it's something to add on. So creative representation is embedded uh, through all stages through an uh, architectural project. This is a workflow diagram used by OMA. Uh, OMA from the observation stage to the final representation. It starts from stage one, let's say it's observation. Uh, so at this stage, you really need to pay attention to the social problem, um, the cultural identity, the local and global effects. It leads to the second stage, which is research. Um, please value this uh, research stage, treat it as a foundation of your design project and of design thesis. And stage three is clarification, which is a step to consolidate on design ideas and explain these ideas to your tutor. Or if you step into the architecture industry, you have to explain it to your clients, uh, clients uh, stakeholders, to the public. And you really need to make a statement uh, which is less confused and more comprehensible. And the last step is the representation. Uh, and you need to use uh, the right proportion of this method to show this project. So it might be physical models with drawings. Um, it might be you know, a book or animation or films or a much formal um, presentation in front of the audience. So uh, for this lecture, I have divide, divided this creative representation into four parts. The first part is mapping, and uh, you should you should quite familiar with mapping now. Uh, it's part of the you know the science study uh, mapping and data visualization become uh, become key techniques used by architectures and design professionals to visualize data and the information collect from the site and the city to better inform the design and communicate information to clients and other project collaborators. And for mapping, so the, rather than you know, rely on the heavy text or numbers of like big data to explore the site information, as architecture students, you know, you should really have the ability to use uh, this technique to display details about the site, 
uh, that would otherwise remain unseen by other people. And this data visualization could allow us to research and present site potentials and its characteristics that offer deeper insights into the projects, which is the uh, uh, development of a projects or lead to any you know, design solutions at the end. So here in this drawing, it's combined the site outline. So you can almost say that, uh, you know, very uh, light pencil lines uh, as a background. So that it shows where this site is about. And on the top of it, you can see the zero vision combining with street photos, documents, the site characteristics and um, the textures in the neighborhood. So this is a technique you can try to, uh, you know, for the coming project, project 1.4, uh, you can easily for your mapping study, try to use one layers which documents, um, you know, the side contours and another layers on top of it to show the journey around that site. Or you can bring it to the Photoshop for the post-production. And sometimes, you know, the, the context of the mapping could be uh, like, like zoom out into the urban scale. This is an example combined multiple layers um, with a quite large urban setting. And it actually shows uh, the collage of contests and artifacts found in King, uh, King's Cross in London. It combines a piece of map uh, using the right to highlight the location and the site boundary. It also documents the K Street views, artifacts, buildings and the local stories. Um, so, you know, using this method by divide it into multiple layers, you can uncover the lo lost history, uh, look at the land use, or what happened and what is happening on the site, who are the people using the space, or is there any specific quality, ambience and atmosphere about that site you really want to, you know, research on it or question about it. I also want to point out that although there is a, you know, uh, this is, this mapping contains a great many informations like with so many different layers, the use of color is very controlled. So everything is almost black and white with a hint of right to highlight, uh, you know, the, the set boundary and the key buildings and the landmark around it. So it keeps a high level of clarity uh, and it not makes the viewers so dizzy. So that's something to take into the mind. If you have so many elements for drawing, maybe just select, you know, uh, two or three colors um, to, to represent it, to show it. And uh, so this is a fairly simple strategy, uh, combining 2D map and 3D isometric building. So the building you want to highlight, you make it into 3D isometric, and it's sort of like pop on, like pop on top of the map. So that shows, uh, you know, the, the geometry and, you know, the site you want to investigate. And this is a series of drawing. Um, it's created by Frank uh, Durismith. Uh, it creates this fantastic range of image that influence uh, different ways of navigate uh, in the city of Amsterdam. And the project called uh, 360 Degrees fought on his dislike for trying maps for the city. So he creates this cloud-like image involving all the aspects of his experience through the journey he took in the city of Amsterdam, taking uh, into account the environment that caused this experience. So from the image, you can see, uh, you know, elements like a uh, concrete staircase, the wall boundary, the signages, um, so like street lamps, so on and so forth. So that is almost like a zero vision 
that depict the journey, um, like his journey in the city. And th this is a the same uh, drawing from uh, this is a different drawing from the same uh, series. And this mapping shows the programmatic explosion of cultural collectors in the city of Paris. So from the top group of layers, so if you see the, the uh, left one, uh, the first four layers is actually depicting the, you know, the city of Paris uh, shows the punctured urban fabric. The mid group trying to highlight the key stakeholders. So it's picked up a group of artists uh, from different institutes, different studios, and how this network is informed a much bigger cultural cl cluster in the city of Paris. And that link with the key cultural building and cultural institute uh, on the map, which is stated on the bottom of this image. So it's again, it contains this massive information within one drawings. So it's only used black, white, and you know a hint of red to to highlight the links bef uh, in between. So that goes back to our pre previous conversation on you know be very controlled of the use of color in your mapping study. So this is my uh, creates by my master's students, uh, Will from last year. So in his in this exercise, he's trying to record uh, you know the ambience of um, Cosworth High Street in Gateshead. So the street was cut into different sections with their visible boundaries and trying to show the link between local culture, which is mostly the Muslim groups and uh, Jewish groups, and uh, what's the shopping typology along the street and how that lead to the, you know, the local community um, around it. And you can think about to create a map based on the urban scale. Uh, look at the time. So this is a, again a project based in London. So for the time, uh, the student looks things like the lunchtime market, slow paced area, uh, peak hour zones, and the five to ten minutes walk from the, each um, underground station. For the exchange, the students look at clubs, bars, console information points, and for control. They look at things like uh, civilians' camera, public space, uh, neighborhood watch zone, and uh, gate guard positions. So everything is combined together, like from time exchange and control, and all things combined together and uh, became the map on the left. So that is a, a map that synthesizes all the information into one piece of work. And this is the same project, um, but look at the local scale. And now the scale is zoomed into Hackney in London. And this isometric map uh, is documents the street art and the graffiti walls uh, from the local area, and which really captures the feature of local uh, Shoreditch High Street, uh, the books part, uh, you know, as a as a photo here, it's a very thin topology uh, like stacks in Newcastle. So you can see the street edge, uh, you can see the boundary of the site, you can see the building facade, and you know so many other elements from this drawing. So I feel like it's always worth to look at local scale mapping. Uh, it's an important part of set analysis, which have to synthesize uh, a very complex urban phenomenon and ideas to create a very practical solution for your projects uh, you know, you know, in a short period. So if you can uh, do that, please zoom me to a 
like local skill and investigate you know what is happening on the site and who is using it how the traffic works you know how the pedestrian navigates um through the site and this is also you know a creative representation um it's a actually an art project called here and there um but in manhattan so this map um, is look, you know, bending the, the Manhattan, New York into this um, horizontal roller coaster loop topography. And it's a little bit like the movie Inception. And you can say, uh, you know, the, the street at the bottom is almost like the first person perspective so you can see the street and that's leading into um, this piece of map with um, you know all the building elements uh, show in 3D so this is something we call combining different views so sometimes it's combining a street view with um, a, like a plan and sometimes it's uh, like combining um, facade section and the plan all together. And I got more examples of you know those representations there. And here is a you know the movie inception. So it shows uh, the folding Paris um, in the movie. Like you see almost see the street is you know folding up and you will see the, the city is mirrored. And the second part is site survey and uh, also graphic drawing. So from the first semester, uh, you know, trace back from your very first project, uh, which is the major building. I think this is something Alice has mentioned. So this is a very traditional way uh, of site survey. Use your hand or foot lens, use a pace, use your height to measure the site and the surrounding buildings. And um, I think also Alice covered this lecture on um, getting an audience survey map for your project, for your site from DigiMap. So I hope everyone has tried to, you know, register with your student account and try to get a piece of two scale map from, the, from that website. It's extremely useful for students. Um, so do learn to um, use Digimap for all your project. And for the representation, uh, you know, 2D representation, it's you know it's always good to use very traditional format to represent the the you know the, the information from your site study site survey, um, like using ink or charcoal to show the set section. And here you can see the long way still applies. So it highlights where is a um, sectional cut, where you cut from the that site, and where is the background. So building um, as a background is shown in very, um, you know, fade pencil line lines, but you know the cut through line is highlight or almost like hatched or inked. So you still see that. The hierarchy of this drawing, um, yeah, from here. All you know, you can use fun learning set section. So here is this the side is between the parents' house. So you see it's almost like a, a yard space, and it's used um, this one point perspective. Uh, so you can say, uh, you know, the length of this yard, and you can see what is currently here existing in the yard. And uh, the plan is sort of merged in the background to indicate the site location. So you can see the, you know, the plan of this site uh, from the back, and you can also see the set section. So this is a technique we, uh, we mentioned use multiple 
perspective of you know multiple medias and it's sort of combined together. And very similar to the mapping study we, we have mentioned, um, you still you can think about use traditional uh, 2D drawings, combine the street view photos to create this uh, like cloud sales section. Uh, so this shows the, the contest, the texture, and the local ambience and atmosphere from different perspectives of the street. But combined together, that makes uh, you know makes this set section. And another creative way, uh, like Ali did here, is not trying to bring things into the Photoshop, not even trying to bring it into one piece of drawing. So here, she simply lays uh, all the information on her drawing board. So that's including you know the uh, a piece of isometric drawing she have produced uh, with few photos she document on site and that's just lay around these drawings and she just take a photo in front of her drawing board and that's become uh, that became her final presentation board so I think sometimes you can uh, think about you know how to show the the, the project the best it's not you know, one way or um, not only a few ways to do it, uh, you can come up with a more like create more creative ideas uh, to this um, synthesis of the set study and set survey. So this is actually very clever and very successful uh, for her thesis. And then we move to several visions. Uh, I think for first year studio projects, you have uh, used it many, many times uh, for your second project, for your pavilion design, and for the last one, which is, uh, you know, for this the, the shop design, um, like we ask you to provide this zero vision, uh, photo montage, uh, collage, or, you know, to show the, um, time uh, of your architectural experience. Um, so here I will highly recommend everyone to look at this book, uh, which is written by Bernard Trumi, uh, which is very classical called Architecture and the Disjunction. So in the, the, the drawing on the left is inspired by this book. Uh, so here the students trying to um, you know, to show the real and the fictional architectural elements of event space and movements with varying level of visibility and accessibility, which are disjoint and alternatively dis uh, distributed across a building. So uh, it shows a hierarchy of space uh, on the very, uh, you know, on, on, the, on the moment, it shows a very linear journey of this experience. In the middle, uh, it shows, um, you know, different space combined into one. And from the, from the left hand side, you can see different group of uh, people and different, uh, you know, their movements from each space. That's has been depicted uh, from the you know the space from the mid, mid, middle co columns. So uh, so here is trying to pick up three elements from uh, you know the a combined scenery. Uh, so the movement is picking out the events and people is picking out, and the space is sort of left uh, unoccupied. By people, so purely show what is the uh, you know the spatial quality within, uh, and this is um, the message uh, mentioned by Bernard Trumi in his book. And and Trumi is actually um, is so so this idea of you know the event movement and space is being conducted through all of his projects uh, by Chumi. And um, on the 
left hand side uh, is a uh, architecture competition uh, he did for the Lavent Park in Paris. Um, so that is a real reflection of this uh, deconstructive movements uh, by by Bernard Trumi. Here he also produced a similar vision, which you can also call it as an uh, exterior perspective of different structures. Look at a collection of objects, movement, and events in each um, semantic frame. And that represents the architecture, how this architecture or this architectural space is experienced uh, through different um, you know, different viewpoints. And that forms this um, the Love It Park competition idea. And um, so this is the Cerro Vision. Uh, it's produced by Christine uh, from year one. And um, she look at uh, the Westgate Road uh, in Newcastle. So this is sort of combining Cerro Vision with mapping. On the left, you can see the journey of this man uh, who is holding a, a volleyball um, out of this ball Newcastle and he's gradually walking towards the city center. And the same vision she produced uh, looks like a comic strip. And um, the drawing on the right hand side is very much like a bird's eye view of you know, the very typical a map, 3D map of the city. But the mapping part and the civil vision have exactly the same drawing style. So this, all these elements has blend very well as one piece of project. So again, uh, the, the color is really controlled. Uh, so actually this uh, like blue greenish color is indicates the, the trees, vegetations around the site. And as is everything else is very much like black and white comic like books, um, comic strips. Um, so this is quite quite successful um, that's a uh, vision for the set study. And uh, so the digital tool uh, is basically is hand drawing. So she, she got amazing hand drawing skill. And then she exposed this drawing into Photoshop and just color the veggie, you know, vegetations here uh, for the map, the mapping part. Okay, so the next is uh, the serial vision uh, could be purely hand drawing as Christine did from the last slide. Uh, and you can also treat the serial vision as a storyboard. Uh, so this is uh, the storyboard created by George Lucas for Star Wars The New Hope, which is episode five, I think. So, um, so here I really want to encourage all students to, you know, think like a, a director, uh, like movie director, try to treat serial vision or use serial vision as your storyboard uh, to show the most attractive part of your project with uh, your special narrative. And uh, so, you know, you're, it, it's, it's part of the drawing. I know uh, maybe Aisha and Alice mentioned about using photos and using like a photo, you know, put into uh, Photoshop and just Photoshop some people uh, and vegetations in. Um, but you can always use uh, drawings uh, to express that, and it could be, you know, very successful, very controlled, and it's also uh, a good way to practice on your perspective drawing. So, yeah, as, I think it's always good to look at the storyboard drawn by different directors. It's very helpful. And so here is the third vision uh, produced by one of my master's students. Um, so the project is about uh, Gibson Town in Newcastle, which is old, old Gibson Town in Newcastle, showing the lives and movements of um, people from uh, that part of history. So this place was once a very thriving 
community. Here, Emily creates uh, six clusters aimed to show, uh, you know, this one's extremely dense population in Gibson Town, and now they, uh, and how they work together and live together to make everyday living as enjoyable and happy experience. Uphill, the community are forced to move to um, elsewhere due to the quality of the housing. And when then the, the whole community was knocked down completely, and this local identity was uh, totally lost since then. And this old Gibson town is uh, around the Hayton part. And uh, you can see uh, it's a it's a urban area that needs to be generated and uh, developed in Newcastle. So in her project, she tried to bring back this friendly, uh, intimate atmosphere of local community, local neighborhood. So she used a hint of warm color um, that added to the thorough vision. And that show that makes the links in between, and also she want to represent that you know was once a very friendly um, community, but now is completely lost. And uh, so the last part is clash, and again you're quite familiar with the idea of clash by now. Um, and here I just want to mention that uh, you know for clashes. Uh, photo montage, it can be shown in very imaginative way uh, with a bit of historical, scientific, and contextual evidence to support it. So here, um, I don't know how many of you have watched uh, Kubrick's um, 1968 films um, as, as like uh, two, 2001, uh, Space Odyssey. So the view is taken on a surreal, sur surreal journey uh, through the space, time, and human history uh, for the future cities. So you can see flying vehicles, uh, skyscrapers, and uh, all those huge LED facades in the city. And it's easily created by uh, a style of you know clouds or you know uh, rendering with textures apply. And another artist that highly supports, you know, the collage movement uh, is a Mexican architect called uh, Titania Bilbo. So she had this very famous interview with Dizin, and uh, she said that I want my architecture to be platform for everyone to create their own way of living. I think a collage accepts all of those uh, personalities diversities and the complexity that's not only my idea. So she's seeing that make clouds help her to develop more exciting buildings. So uh, in her project, she refused to, uh, you know, produce a rendering, you know, with a 3D format for the clouds. But she still runs the, her studio quite successfully in the world. So I guess that you know that that's something shouldn't be a mistake, and it probably brings more opportunities. Um, so yeah, I, I will highly re recommend you all to read that um, interview uh, in 2019. And uh, so she has a very clear viewpoint of why she claimed to ban rendering. Uh, in her studio, uh, which she feels the finalized image uh, become uh, obstacles in the creative process. And um, she feels like um, so this clutch movement uh, is going to include different opinions and foster more collaborative approach to the design. So from the image she produced, um, it's just, you know, uh, like different piece of images that carefully selected and combined together. There's no uh, interest in make any kinds of 3D rendering with very accurate perspective. 
um, I think that's that's way to continue the discussion with the clients, and also you you have some room to make the change uh, during the design pro progress. Um, so here it's uh, another student project, uh, and this is um, it's actually it's a good solution uh, to trying to tackle the current COVID challenge. Um, in my studio, in my master's studio, uh, we have been talking about new urbanism, new public realm, new civic place uh, for a while. Uh, so to respond to this proposal, uh, trying to appropriate uh, Oxford streets to form a new urban commons using uh, Clarges method. So uh, the proposal is trying to pedestrianize a part of Oxford Street between Oxford Circus and Tottenham Court Road and insert this civic span with the race platform. So by doing that, uh, like new high value retails can be created, making use of anonymous upper level of Oxford Street. So the so from the upper desk, you can say uh, all these windows are going to be open to this platform. So there's another tier of retails are going to be created from this Oxford Street. And uh, the economic gun is used to fund the new civic space in the center of the street, um, can just post this retail space along the street. So from the ground floor, it's very much of giving the space back to the public. So you can see the urban greens, um, the, the vertical land, uh, different kinds of performative values um, from the ground floor. And it's almost like a new urban park, new urban jungle, uh, but it still functions as a, a, you know, the a Porsche commercial street um, in London. And so, uh, so this is also a clash. So this drawing, uh, which on the right, is inspired by um, a famous drawing by uh, Hernomers Bush, which is a Netherlands painter. And uh, so the paint uh, Bush did is called Five Sellers, the Conjurer, the Conjurer. And the conjurer on the right of the image captured his apt and diverse audience with a game of cups and balls. And on the right side, the students uh, is inspired by this uh, medieval painting, and he creates this modern copy. So the sixth setting is turned into an urban room. So you can see a map on the table uh, in the middle. And you can see the future development, which is shown uh, in this pink color, is laid on the table. And you still have this, uh, the diverse of audience, which are the public uh, who are interested to hear of the, you know, the, the future development of the city and engaging in this planning uh, progress. So, I think that is a very interesting way to try to interpret its history, but give some like a modern uh, meaning for for this drawing. And for this project, it's also a master project. Uh, so we talk about this perspective several times uh, in this lecture. So here is very complex idea. I think. Uh, she, he is very ambitious and trying to include many, many uh, perspectives and views uh, to, for, you know, to construct this drawing. So you can see the plan, you can see the section, you can see the skyline of the city, which is London, in the background, and it's all mixed together um, to form this uh, project. Um, so a little background about this project. Uh, the project takes on the uh, UK's uh, Conservative Party's permit to fix the NHS. So the project is a floating vessels for the uh, River Times and provide uh, healthcare and wellness for the old Britons. So, uh, you know, this group of 
elderly people is gathered together into this uh, small island and they enjoy all the health care facilities. They enjoy, uh, you know, the, the city views, but uh, it's almost like a sustainable community that growing from the riverbank. And last part is resources. Uh, so the first slides uh, here is a few uh, Photoshop shortcuts. Uh, I think that will help you to work smartly, uh, smart and quicker. And it's no need to memorize it. Uh, it's just trying to provide a quick go to reference. So I hope you can learn them from, you know, practicing. Um, while you're using Photoshop. So it's, it's something to develop for the next three years. And, and this is two websites. One is called uh, textures.com and another one called Texture Hub. So the, those two websites is, uh, is, is, has this massive selection of texture. Um, I think it's over like, like, one million something images here um, in, in those two websites. And you need to create a count, then you can download um, about 10 to 15 images per day. And it's all high quality texture, which you can apply for your Photoshop and for your 3D model software. And um, it's also have some like a paid accounts allow you to download unlimited texture, uh, but I don't think you need that um, from your first year. So, so try to, um, okay, I, I think Seven also mentioned uh, texture heaven. So yeah, it, it's, there's actually many, many websites that provide this free texture, free, um, uh, you know, results. So definitely search for, for you know, good website, and if you got any good one, share it with your um, studio mates, share with your classmates. And another one I found is very good is called um, uh, architecture, uh, architectures, and uh, it has a good range of Photoshop texture and even people. Uh, very good cutout, easy to download. And, uh, you know, it's also have this uh, web, web app called Create, um, which allows you to, um, allows users to create material for download as seamless texture and for the, also for the cat hatch. So here is a very, very neat design, very easy to use one. So I will highly recommend you to look at this one as well for architecture students. And this one, uh, I, I will try to pronounce it called uh, Skara Kuba. Kuba. It's, uh, it's, it's actually created by a Swedish students. And uh, there's something has merged from my master use. Uh, so this student is trying to provide, um, um, you know, free, free people cards for both students and commercial use. And all the human figure you from this website are free to use, and you don't need to pay for it. And it's, uh, you know, contains a wide range of uh, activities, a group of people, individual, uh, you know, children, adults. So it, it's probably the best people cut website, and uh, you can you can download it for all, and you can just you know add it to your to the list, and you know drag drag it when you need it. So yeah, this is for for peoples for people, and I think this. Uh, come to the last slides of my uh, lecture. So I think uh, I have provided a range of examples of creative representation, which is mitigating between digital and analog. Uh, my last word would be as, you know, as the Herzog and the Merrill's uh, short paragraph from the beginning, the computer of 
all this digital process is an important tool, but it doesn't replace thinking uh, for for students and for young architects, hand drawing is still important. It acts as the, you know, the right side of the brain. So more than the digital process uh, that builds the foundation of visual thinking, hand drawings lead the authors, authorship to drawings, originality, understanding, and the skill of developing work. So at least for the early stage, please keep practicing on your hand drawings sketch on your handbook uh, or sketch with your, with your sketchbook or notebook. So when the idea is consolidated, move to the computer, find a way um, that shows the project the best. Uh, I believe the integration of technology with traditional artistic method continually lead to intellectually substantive and imaginative design. So I hope you can really find your own style and your own uh, your, your own way of working in the near future. And there's no need to copy any style or anything as I mentioned, but uh, I, I hope you can always try um, you know different ways to present the drawing and uh, don't don't stick with uh, you know traditional plan section and elevation. Uh, for the project. Yeah, I think that's the final slides and um, I'm open to questions.